in architecture practice, uh, nowadays uh, it's somehow challenging uh, to be able to find uh, good calibers who are uh, able to design and construct uh, sustainable buildings that could cope with uh, extreme climate change events, both in summertime and in wintertime. And uh, it all begins in architecture education. If the students are not equipped with uh, knowledge, tools and uh, practical uh, uh, experience uh, when they graduate they start to face all of these uh, issues uh, in their um, uh, real life the, or real day-to-day -day life practice uh, so back again when it starts with designing our curriculum and how the uh, our, our, how architecture education could cope actually with uh, climate change uh, I would like to give an example here in Olborg for example when I uh, teach students sustainable architecture uh, it's really hard when I try to introduce some of those uh, concepts in using natural materials in design and construction. When they look around, they only find concrete jungles all over. And uh, concrete is, uh, or cement is one of the most available and affordable material here in Olborg because of the uh, cement industry. Uh, I'm not saying like cement is, is not good to use, but uh, there are also some other alternative materials that could even be better than using uh, industrial materials. Uh, using uh, clay or using straw or using wood could be a good uh, su sustainable uh, um, alternative solution for our contemporary uh, uh, design, especially in the residential sector. And that causes a lot of um, uh, problems when you try to introduce those uh, um, uh, concepts. Uh, if you don't have uh, some of those uh, proof of concepts uh, in real life, so the students could see actually uh, some of those day-to-day uh, -day, uh, practice. Uh, and that also had to do with uh, some of the uh, building laws and building regulations. Uh, in Denmark uh, specifically, uh, there are, uh, like, it's very restricted to use uh, industrial materials. There is no codes uh, that could encourage actually using earth buildings or using uh, timber or wood uh, in, on, on a big, like, bigger scale uh, because of um, fire uh, regulations or because of say other kind of safety uh, uh, regulations that limit somehow uh, the wide use of natural materials in Denmark. There is a recent study in Denmark um, which is uh, interesting in a way because they did a lot of interviews with practitioner architects in different uh, uh, architecture firms, uh, small scale and big scale. And they tried to talk to them about a life cycle uh, assessment and life cost uh, analysis or also life cost assessment for buildings. Uh, majority are aware and familiar with the concepts, but they don't use it except uh, f um, for like, uh, or they use it in, in a very limited occasions. And sometimes it comes at the uh, final phase uh, of, the, um, of the project. It's either because of time limitation or because of the uh, budget, uh, the project budget. And if we would like to talk about sustainable architecture, we need actually to emphasize uh, applying those life cycle assessment, life cost assessment from the early stages uh, in the design. And it's back again uh, important to introduce that to architecture students, but if, because if they are not aware of uh, these concepts and they don't learn from, uh, from day one how to do these calculations and how to do this, um, actually des uh, d um, design decisions in using materials and using const sustainable construction concepts that affects at the end uh, the final outcome uh, in, in design and construction. Yeah, we need to look thoroughly at uh, our architecture curriculums uh, and not to put sustainable architecture as a kind of a commodity or a kind of a, um, a, a it's not the cherry that you put on the cake. Uh, so, the, so the students are introduced to it at the final stage of their education. It should be from day one, from the first day they are introduced to what is called architecture. Nowadays we need to add the word sustainable and resilient architecture with it to be able to have this generation of architects who are equipped with the knowledge uh, and uh, information concerning sustainable architecture. We had to introduce those concepts as early as possible. We need to look at architecture curriculums. We need to update majority of them and to connect them to recent research and in, uh, in, the cutting edge knowledge in uh, sustainable architecture. All these new trends and new um, research work uh, for resilient, sustainable and climate change adapted uh, designs should be also uh, connected to our uh, architecture education. So um, there's still a gap between research and education and we need 
uh, to do a lot of everything uh, reducing and mitigating this gap.